Okay, so in this problem we're asked, what is the smallest integer x for which the sides of a triangle can be 2x, 4x plus 10, and x plus 20? This is actually my second attempt at this problem. I realized, thanks to a viewer comment, that I had made a mistake. So let's take a look at this uh, and explain the premise of it and then solve it. The premise is what's called the triangle inequality. And the basic idea is that if you have a triangle, any triangle, and you look at the three sides of the triangle. Let's say we have side A, and we have side B, and we have side C. What the triangle inequality says is that, okay, no matter what triangle you have, and no matter how you write it, if you add up any two sides, it'll be greater than the third side. So we can quickly write and say that, okay, if this thing here is a triangle, then A plus B has to be greater than C, and every other combination has to be greater uh, than any other side. So for example, if I had A plus C, that has to be greater than what? Well, A plus C has to be greater than B. And then B plus C, oops, B plus C has to be greater than A. And this is actually um, not some, I think, crazy or mysterious property. If you were to grab three sticks and uh, connect those three sticks to form a triangle, well, if you're going to connect these sticks at their endpoints, right, and stick A and B were not uh, longer, the sum was not longer than the length of stick C, you could not form a triangle. It wouldn't work. There would be a gap somewhere. So you can try this uh, and test it out. But what does this mean about this equation and this problem here? Well, it means that we have to look at this triangle, and the sides aren't A, B, and C, right? The sides are 2x. 4x plus 10 and x plus 20. And we have to look at every combination and find out what's the smallest integer so that the sum of any two sides is greater than the third. So let's set this up. Um, in the first scenario we have, let's say, 2x plus 4x plus 10. That has to be greater than x plus 20. So now we can just solve for x. If I combine x's here, I get 6x plus 10 is greater than x plus 20. I'm going to subtract x from both sides and subtract 10 from both sides. Kind of combining two things at once. x minus x is 0. 20 minus 10 is 10. This is 0. 6x minus x is 5x. And 5x is greater than 10. Divide both sides by 5. Right? Inverse operations here. And x is greater than 10 divided by 5, or x is greater than 2. What does that mean? Well, that means um, already you know that x has to be some integer greater than 2, right? So, for example, 3 would work if that's greater than 2, as an integer greater than 2, where the sum of these two sides is greater than this side. We have to also check um, other combinations. We might need a bigger, a bigger result. So let's try that. Um, so let's try 4x plus 10 plus x plus 20. That has to be greater than 2x, right? Um, I could have, I mean, in the first scenario, I added 2x plus 4x plus 10. I didn't want to just reverse that order. I know I'm going to get the same result. So I'm trying now two other sides uh, altogether and adding them. Here, when we simplify, we get 5x plus 30 is greater than 2x. And now what I'm going to do is divide, um, well, I could divide both sides by 2. Sorry, but what makes, I think, more sense is subtract 5x on both sides. Right, this cancels out. We get 30 is greater than negative 3x. And remember here we're going to divide by a negative value. So that means we're going to reverse everything in the inequality. And this is going to become x is greater than negative 10. Remember here you're, when you're reversing uh, inequalities, the reason you're doing that is because you're dividing or multiplying by a negative. Dividing and multiplying by a negative reverses everything, of course, because uh, if you think about the number line, the negative numbers, uh, if you have a really big positive number, like 100, if you multiply that or divide it by negative 1 or any negative number, what ends up happening? Well, negative 100 becomes negative 100. It becomes really small. Whereas a small number like 1 becomes something like negative 1, which is small, but not nearly as small as negative 100. So you have this idea of reversing values when you're multiplying or dividing by negatives. Uh, anyway, we can go into that uh, in much further detail, but let's keep going ahead. So now we know x has to also be greater than negative 10. So it has to be greater than 2 and greater than negative 10, which means so far if x was 3, it would work, right? In both cases, um, 
x being 3, that's bigger than negative 10 and bigger than 2. Now the last scenario we're going to look at, the last combination we're going to check, is just to make sure that 3 would also work for this last scenario. So here we should ch would check out 2x plus x plus 20, that needs to be greater than 4x plus 10. So here we combine x's, we get 3x plus 20 is greater than 4x plus 10. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides and subtract 3x from both sides. Cancels out, right? Cancels out. 20 minus 10 is 10. 4x minus 3x is x. So x could be anything less than positive 10. So in the last video, I think I chose 1, but clearly that's a mistake because our first our prerequisite here is that x has to be a value greater than 2. Remember, it has to work on all three combinations, whether a plus b is greater than c, or a plus c is greater than b, or so forth. Whatever you choose has to work in all three scenarios. So really, you're asking, what's the smallest integer that satisfies x is greater than 2, greater than negative 10, and less than 10? Because if you choose an integer like 3, which is the answer here, that works. It's greater than 2, it's greater than negative 10, and less than 10. And it's the smallest one available. Of course, also 8 would work, right? Um, but, that, but that's not the smallest integer. That's the largest integer on this list that will work. 10 would not work because we know x would have to be less than 10 um, in our last scenario. Okay, so I hope this helped, and thanks for the feedback.